Hello and welcome to If Versus Ifs. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. In this video, we're gonna put if and ifs in a three round battle. Now, before we jump to Excel, let me know in the comments below, which one do you like better, if or ifs? Ladies and gentlemen, to my left in red trunks, with an impressive 30 plus year career, if. And the challenger, the new kid on the block, ifs. Let's get ready to rumble round one. Now at a high level, the difference between if and ifs is if is designed to analyze a single condition, whereas ifs is designed to analyze multiple conditions. So in this bonus plan, if the employee is eligible with a Y, then their bonus is 500. If eligible is N, then their bonus is zero. So we're gonna try this with each of these just to get warmed up. Equals if. All right, the logical test. So what are we testing? We're basically saying if this is equal to yes, then return 500. Otherwise, return zero. Close the function and enter. Let's go ahead and fill this down, and I think we got it. So let's do the same thing, this time with ifs. Equals ifs. Okay, so here we have a logical test. So the logical test is, does this equal yes? If so, then I wanna return 500, comma. Now here's where the syntax gets a little different. Here we wanna say if eligible equals n, then return zero. So with the ifs function, there are pairs of arguments. The condition to test, the value of that condition is true. Enter. Let's go ahead and fill this down, and I think we got it. So who won this round? I don't know. In practice, if this was my workbook, I'm probably gonna go with the old school legacy OG if function because there's just one less argument. All right, let's go to round two. All right, so here we're gonna look at multiple conditions. They have to be eligible and vested. So if eligible is no, then it's zero. Otherwise, we take a look at the vested column. If the vested column is no, then it's zero. Otherwise, if it's yes, then it's 500. So how would we do this with if and then ifs? Equals if. So what is a logical test? Okay, if this is equal to n, then I wanna return zero, comma. So if that is false, we know eligible is a yes in this case because there's only two choices. And so then we have to look at the vested column. So we're gonna use another if function here. And what this is really doing is called nested functions. It's where a function argument is defined by another function. And this can get really confusing when we're nesting if functions. So if vested equals no, then zero. If that's not true, then we can nest another if function. If vested equals yes, then 500. Close that if function, close that if function, close that if function. So before we hit enter, let's review. I'm asking the if function to look to see if C12 is equal to N. If it is, then go with zero. If it's not, we know it's equal to yes, because there's only two choices in this example. So then we have to look at the vested column. If the vested column is no, then return zero. Otherwise, if the vested column is yes, then return 500. Enter. And let's go ahead and fill this down. Now let's take a look at the same thing with the ifs function. Equals ifs. Does this equal no? If so, return zero. Otherwise, it's yes. So then we want to take a look at this. If that's equal to no, then return zero. Otherwise, if this is equal to yes, then return 500. And I'm gonna simplify both of these in a second here. So let's just go ahead and hit enter, and let's go ahead and fill this down. Okay, and both of these return the same basic thing. Now, yes, we can simplify this by typing 500, and we can simplify this, which I'm gonna demonstrate in a minute. But for now, the key point here is, with the legacy if function, each condition we're testing is really looking at a new if function. And so this means that we are nesting functions. This means that we are using the if function as an argument of a previous if function. And this just means that it can become very hard to reverse engineer and understand the logic and to understand what's going on. So they both provide the same results, so we can use them both, but the purpose of the ifs function and why it was introduced is to simplify this type of logic to make these formulas easier to understand, troubleshoot, and maintain. So let's go to round three. Here, if eligible equals no, it's zero. Otherwise, we inspect the vested column. If vested is equal to no, it's zero. Otherwise, we go to the type column. If you're exempt, it's gonna be your annual salary times 5%. If you're non-exempt, this is expressed as an hourly rate, which means we need to multiply this by the number of work hours in a year. We'll use 2080 times 5%. 
So let's try with the if function equals if. Okay, if this is equal to no, it's zero. Otherwise, if vested is equal to no, then it's zero. Otherwise, if type is equal to exempt, then it is the rate times 0.05, comma. Otherwise, if type is equal to non-exempt, then it is rate times 2080 times 0.05. Close that if function, close that if function, close that if function, and enter. Let's go ahead and fill this down. Okay, so this is no, so it's zero. This is no, so it's zero. These are both yes, so it's calculating a bonus. And this is no, so that's zero. And these are both yes, so this is gonna be exempt, so it's gonna be calculating that. All right, this time let's try it with ifs. Equals ifs. If this is equal to no, return zero. If this is equal to no, then return zero. If this is equal to exempt, then return this times 0.05. If this is equal to non-exempt, then it's this times 2080 times 0.05. Close the function and enter. Now let's go ahead and fill this down and same results as before. And now let's see if we could simplify these. If eligible equals no, then it's zero. I like that. Otherwise, if vested is equal to no, then it's zero. I like that. Otherwise, if the type is equal to E, then I multiply that, that's fine. Now, since there's only two choices, I know that if it's not E, then it's N. So I technically don't need to include this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. And then I'm gonna take off one of these closing parens. So now this is saying if it's exempt, then it's gonna be this, otherwise it's gonna be this. And since there's only two choices here, that will work just fine, so we hit enter. Let's go ahead and fill this down, and we get the same results as before, and that's fine. So how would we do something similar here with the ifs function? Okay, so in this case, if eligible equals no, it's zero, I like that. If vested equals no, I like that. If type is equal to E, I like that. And then this is where we can simplify it. Basically, the ifs function will stop at the first match, so it stops at the first true value. So if none of these are true, what we can say is, true. So what this is saying is, if this is true, return it. Otherwise, look at this. Is this true? No. Okay. Is this true? No. Okay. Is this true? Yes, this is true. So return it. So that's how we can sort of define a default value if none of the other arguments are true. Enter. Let's go ahead and fill this down and we got it. I don't do these battle videos to really declare a winner. I really do them to provide a fun way to explore their differences because I feel that when you really know and understand their differences, you're better informed and better equipped to understand which one to use in any given situation. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my Pivot Table for Beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a Pivot Table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 